temperature went beyond the 95th percentile, there was a 3% change in mortality. On the other extreme, for every degree Celsius that went below the 5th percentile, there was a 6% change in increase in mortality. So it's twice the time when you drop as opposed to when you go up. Yeah. Well, it's easier to freeze to death than... True, and your crops freeze. Right. Crops freeze. Um, that's now, right. I forget those all the qualifications that went into those freezing. particular numbers, yeah. and obviously it matters. Are you looking at annual yeah. numbers, yeah. seasonal yeah. numbers, yeah. and yeah. like? For our Hyper present purpose, we really don't need to get months into months. those details. The point is, a big change that comes suddenly is going to be killing people either directly or indirectly. And it will probably uh, be older ones and, and very young ones. And let's talk about people, disease. There yeah. are, old are people or several diseases which for a variety of reasons Swamp have a sweet seasonal pattern. Anyone want to name one? Oh, malaria. Malaria. Flu. Very good. Like With cholera. regard to it's malaria, the seasonal, for the 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 actual malarial like organism to develop problems in the, in the mosquito. So and you have to have temperatures that are in the range of 16 to 33 degrees Celsius, and the optimum is 20 to 30. And so England had malaria from time to they time. Call it, this yeah, chills and Even fever, though it's fever the and ice age, age, during the summers could get warm enough to do it. But the line that, will, that is malaria, going to be they die by flies, potentially they affected by malaria hours. is going to shift with the climate. If it gets um, too cold, the mosquitoes won't you know, hatch. So if you don't have mosquitoes, you don't have malaria. And if it gets, if it gets real wet, you get more mosquitoes. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the rainfall dimension. Mm -hmm. Well, and um, yeah, and that affects the fish who eat the, the larva. You know, if it gets too warm in the water, the fish aren't eating. Components but I've seen mixed that, um, statements in the literature about them. You had some plagues that were in one season and later plagues that seemed to crop up in a different season. Virginia, do you want to comment um, on that? Generally speaking, uh, plague was worse in the warm seasons and papered off in the winter. But this did not necessarily follow. Not always. Not always. Because some of the diseases would be very much related to population density. If you had 20 people in a room huddled around a fire, they're going to be more likely to pass things amongst themselves. Or if there's a housing shortage for some reason, you have a lot of people in one place. Yeah, for me, some of the plagues are very much dependent on that. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Population. Yeah, the, if you have a dog, the rats are going to... 1628 to 30, they had their... like the dog better. 1628 to 30, Switzerland, the outbreaks were in the winter. But uh, Marseille, 1720, London, 1665, 1625, Debrecen, 1739, those were summer plagues. Yeah, I think you, the... If you look at the ones that affected the Germanies in our period, the 1624-25 plague and then the 1635-36 plague, uh, the uptick in deaths in the parish registers begins in May, peaks in June, July, and August, tapers off by the autumn. And, and really, it, mm -hmm. <coughs> these geographic variations that I first talk, mentions have you know, the sources that I've read on the subject of the winter versus summer seem to be cultural as much as anything else because in order to be exposed to plague, you have to be exposed to the fleas from the rats. You know, and cities that are kept relatively clean in the summertime, and, and houses that are kept relatively <laughs> rat free no. don't expose you to fleas oh. and rats inside the houses. And in the summertime, you're more out and likely to be exposed well, to fleas coming off the dying cats, dogs, rats, whatever. Uh, it's, it's a matter of transmission. 
Right. The plague has to be transmitted from one place to another, and there were far more traders and in the cattle drovers yeah. and people like that moving in the summer. I know, right. I know and that. London can get a winter plague for a whole bunch of cultural reasons. If you have a tough summer, a tough winter, and you have a lot of people fleeing smaller villages mm -hmm. because they've been snowed out, they can't they need to go move someplace else, their houses or whatever. You can see that causing a wind, uh, a, a summer see play. The climate is forcing people to move someplace else. I mean, they can take a disease with them so. or be more packed in someplace. Yeah, and in oh, Switzerland, I can see, I know in the Switzerland and the, the Black Forest and those areas, when it gets cold, they bring everything into the house. So everything with disease comes into the house. Well, most of the peasants in that day, you, your livestock, livestock lived underneath, and you uh, lived up top. No. And a lot of them, they did. No. Depend, again, the Black Forest, they did. And parts of Switzerland, they did. But not. That, that, again, again, yeah. It depends on where you are. Exactly. Some places, that's true. And other some places, places it, it okay, is not. Okay, so we yeah. talked about disease. And there are some other diseases we can mention, but I'd like to move on. Agriculture. Uh, the the temperature and rainfall variability that you see has really dramatic and frequently adverse effects on agriculture. Fister, I don't know if he's the same one that uh, uh, has defined these little ice age effects and essentially March, April, if it's cold, uh, reduces forage uh, for the animals, etc. July, August, um, uh, rain. Yeah, uh, drought. Uh, affecting, uh, limiting the harvest. September, sort of, and October, sort of a double whammy. If it gets cold early, the animals are brought into the barn, etc. And the rain interferes with sowing. It reduces nitrogen content in the soil. Or it can knock down a whole problems a for whole the next crop, year. Yeah. Uh, so these he defined as little ice age effects and even drew this little graph. But it had, to, it had to be prolonged for more than just one year. For, for it to have a dramatic effect on well, population migration or even with with numbers. well okay sustainability when you were talking about famine you had a bad harvest one year that was usually survivable when you had bad harvest because food could be brought in from elsewhere you would have may have stores when you had two or more years of bad harvest that's where you started. Migration. The famine. You, know, that, more you, you see, uh, it's not. Actually. It's not just those times. Look at the Dust Bowl in the 30s. Sure. Okay. And you had migration plenty there going out to California. There's right. Exactly. Because they had how many years with no crops Almost whatsoever? 10. Yeah. Now, we yeah. can follow prices of agricultural crops and they see also some of these effects, to but you oh. have to be but careful be because some of them. The price of, um, what was it, rye went up, um, I think, um, in the 1630s in one of the areas I looked at, but it, that's been attributable to plague and its effect on the labor for harvesting and all the other agricultural activities for bringing the crop in as opposed to a little ice age. But in that happened. time period, say, 1630s. It was quite warlike. You had a lot of coalescing events that created population downfalls as well as migration, not just crop failure. You had intentional destruction <laughs> out there, as well as uh, you know diseases that that were well, coming from the of far east. And the egg thing. You know, people are hungry, so they go to war, and they yeah, go to exactly war, and it right. makes them hungry. So, and so well, that, and you have some of these other effects. Merely crop failures. It was it was it was the Anglo-political 
society of its time. You had a lot of fiefdoms that were very much at each other's throats. Fiefdoms. No. Fiefdoms is I do think that what do you like for fiefdoms? The, the Thirty Years' War started when yeah, fiefdoms is way medieval. Call it 1621. So they've had 12 years of people rampaging back and forth. I'm sure that would increase morbidity and more hazards. Just got another way. If you didn't hear Virginia, everybody listen up. 1618. Yeah, but you've had 15 years of of intermittent violence that would. Your crops could be ruined, your family could be burned out. So it would have, I'm sure, increased. But Eric put yeah. the Ring of Fire in 1631 because it hadn't gotten that bad yet. It's the worst thing that had happened. Kind of depended by where you lived, didn't it? Well, yeah. <laughs> if you were from the, I would not have wanted to be in Magdeburg. Right, yeah. Magdeburg, it was the worst thing. That, the worst thing that had happened in the, uh, at the, to, at, that point. At the, to that yeah. point was the massacre of Magdeburg. Yeah, but you had the armies marching. And those armies just stole everything that wasn't nailed down because they didn't. They didn't and have. They, they did not it have. Was it was It wasn't powers powers scorched earth. It was no, it wasn't scorched earth. It was called forage. Oh, right. They were feeding but themselves. Bear in mind that we're looking now at the entirety of Europe, and even to a lesser degree at other parts of the world. Where I haven't really spoken about it much, other than you know, very a little bit at the beginning. And the armies, there, there were particular routes that the armies tended to travel back because and the, forth. Because the road was easier that way, or yeah. the horses, those the artillery. Areas, I imagine, would show much more of those degradation than some of the other areas where no one had much reason to march. So I'm not sure, particularly at this time period, that we want to project that as being, you know, a pervasive effect. Where do you get your temperatures effect. from anyway? I'm really dying. Oh, I've know. been going well, Because it. nobody even had a thermometer yet. And yeah. I'll get... So I'm kind of curious where that we that get tree tree temperature readings. Tree let's talk about good, that now. Good harvest, bad harvest, I let's can see. Let's, let's, let's talk about that now. Water frozen, water thaw. Okay. Water yeah, but that's water very water crude. The first... <laughs> well, there was a very primitive temperature and thermometer in existence. It was a specific gravity type thing, totally impractical for any, as other than a scientific curiosity, I would there say. There weren't very many of them either. And was that they were well, developed about that time. They were, the, the thermometer Spain. developed pretty soon after yeah. our it's time period. But the first, good, <laughs> the first good in, instrumental records were in England, 1659. And there, you actually have a continuous series pretty much first from 1659 for temperature. Now, of course, that has to be taken with a grain of salt because they understood, they not only were the thermometers themselves less sophisticated, they had no concept of calibration. And you mean they, they were had, NIST certified? Had, the modern approach will specify where you put your thermometer. It's so many feet above the ground so you avoid the microclimate effects. It must not be in direct sun and so on and so forth. And actually there have been attempts to work with some 19th century records where they've attempted effectively through comparing series from, you know, the fort here and the fort there and doing various manipulations to try to normalize the data to get a better <coughs> instrumental record. But obviously when you only have one record, you really can't do very much. The, there are more of these records developed later on, but yes, in 1630s, no instrumental record. So First what people Europe, do, in China they, they did not have it a thermometer. They didn't have it in, as, as an instrument that we can measure records in China. That we can have numbers, but they had a way of measuring it. In China. I don't remember them having a thermometer. I don't remember them having. But any 